Okay, on lesson nine, let's expand our footwork skills. Footwork's the game changer for everything. Basketball, football, anyone can just sit there and shoot free throws, but once there's footwork and pressure, it's a much harder game. Same thing with boxing. So obviously this is gonna depend on the amount of space that you have within your training environment and what your pad holder has been introduced to at this point. But if we've progressed our skills, whether you're an instructor or you're at home doing this with a training partner, three cones is pretty basic. You're gonna start the round off, it might be a two or three minute round. Your more advanced students can absolutely throw different combinations. You can tell them if you're more advanced, you're gonna throw a jab cross hook or a two, three, two or a cross hook upper. But I'm gonna feed this as a one, two for beginners to start. So they would start the round out at the center cone and that's gonna get them also kind of calibrated for how they're supposed to mitt uh, on this round. And we're just gonna throw one, twos and we're gonna work on some transitional footwork and passes through this side and this side. It's only when they're fed out on my side of the cone, but closer to that center cone, that she throws those punches. So I can throw as many of them as I want. If we were more advanced in this drill, we would just do jab cross hook, let's say. Now I just create more of an interactive footwork because I, as a pad holder, have more skills. And this is going to build her target recognition and it creates my skill set. And as a pad holder now, I'm really getting some work in. It's a real true act of rest for me as opposed to just kind of standing like this and not really supporting my body, not getting my abs engaged and creating a far more realistic set of boxing skills. Okay? Okay, so we're on lesson 10. Uh, building great mitt holding skills and some footwork in your boxing mitt classes or in your own personal workout. We're going to take the three cones and we're going to create a triangle that's more or less proportional to the height or the length of the leg of the striker. We're going to trap them in those uh, cones and they sit inside the triangle. We are now going to use the cross hook cross. Once again, we can do jab cross. I just want to give you some other concepts and ideas. I am always knitting on my side, cross, cross, and then I'm going to come back with that bobbin weave. I'm going to swing my left and my right. It gives her an idea of how to manage her footwork and her weight. Then I'm going to move to another peak of the triangle, and now she is going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. This is going to help with getting students to stop squaring out. So if they get to here, a lot of times people square out on this bob and knee, and then their footwork, their stance, their guard, it all just falls apart. So we want to constantly give them visuals that they can use to pretty much auto-correct now in that two or three minute round um, their stance and get better at understanding how critical their fighting stance is to the success of their boxing. So here's my cross across. cross the bottom weave, and then we know where to line up and stop. There you go. So, what we're trying to avoid, just to make sure you understand, is cross or cross. And then this sloppy kind of squat that they do. That way they understand how to orient their body. My arms are actually not tired at all because as I'm moving, I'm also resting them. So when it's my turn, I can get a high intensity boxing round in myself. I hope these were a helpful series and lessons for you. 
and good luck with all your boxing students or your own training.